Welcome back to ASX Market Watch. Thanks very much for joining me. What a week it has been on the markets. Whoa, my goodness. Um, so really, just checking out the markets, we're looking at three indices. The first one is the ASX Top 200. And um, again, uh, oh, it's, it, it has been quite a, a bit of a roller coaster ride on the ASX Top 200 this last week. But um, when you do look at the charts, it's, um, it sort of does make a little bit of sense, which is nice. Um, to see a little bit of sense in what's going on at the moment. Um, the next one is the Dow Jones and then the Hang Seng as well, because for some reason, well, I mean, uh, obviously it's fairly obvious, but the Australian market is is following um, more of our Asian partners at the moment, um, mainly because we're so resource heavy. So um, yeah, so we'll be checking that out and see if that will help us in analysing the uh, Australian markets as well. So again, thanks very much for stopping by. It's good to have you here chatting about the markets. Um, the first one here is the ASX Top 200. And it's a classic chart, and I just want to show you this because last week um, I was talking about the um, this broadening wedge formation, this broadening top formation, and this is what it looks like. We've got this uh, three peaks, and they're all higher, and then we've got three troughs. Well, we do now anyway. This is our uh, two troughs initially we had, and they're all lower. So usually in a bull market we'll have higher peaks and higher troughs, in a bear market, we'll have lower peaks, lower troughs. Um, but this is going both ways. And so what does it mean? Well, um, first of all, we've got an early sell signal. This is a daily chart, by the way, so every single um, bar is one day. Um, so this is our early sell signal, and this was back on 22nd of April. We had crossed the shorter-term trend line, and then we had a lower peak and a lower trough. Uh, I spoke about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but... But since then, the market hasn't even looked back. It has uh, just tanked. It's just tanked probably, uh, yeah, at least 8% there, or 5 to 8%, which is, um, you know, it's quite a large move for only a couple of weeks. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, even though it's dropped so far, look at where it found support. It was at the bottom edge of this broadening um, top formation, this broadening wedge formation. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to find support there in the future as well. It may drop through it because that's what's happened in the past, at least. Um, and I can show you a few instances of that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just uncanny that that's exactly where it did find support. And looking at the longer-term trend line, guys, because you know the trend lines that I use, um, they tend to find support and resistance in the future. Um, looking at that, sorry for all these crazy lines on the chart. I'll just get rid of some of these. There we go. So that's the long-term trend line there. As you can see, it has passed the long-term trend line, so there's no more support from that angle. Um, now, looking back over history, this uh, this little section here is August 2007. As you can see, it's a broadening wedge formation as well. Went for only a couple of months, whereas our latest one has gone for at least six months. Um, now, it, it dropped below the bottom support of the uh, the broadening wedge there, as you can see that's where we would currently be at that support level. Now it did drop well, well below, but what happens is it does have this sharp move down, sharp move back up again, so it sort of overcorrects, and then we see this bear market. That was our 2008 bear market, and going back in history again, uh, this is on a larger scale as well. Back in 2001, we've got our, our little formation here. Not as beautiful as our last ones, but still, it is a broadening top nonetheless. And it shot all the way through that bottom level again, that bottom support level. But then it overcorrected back to the upside, all the way back up. And then 2002, bear market, as you can see. So um, so that's two instances of where that has happened in a broadening wedge formation. Um, not saying it's going to happen exactly like that. Obviously, things are different every single time, which is probably one of the, uh, the things that keeps drawing us back to the market. It's always changing and it's always interesting. Um, but that's what we're looking at at the moment on the SX Top 200. Hope that helps. Um, looking at our partners, so the Dow Jones, uh, again, really sort of similar thing on the Dow Jones. This is our longer term uptrend line. And again, as I say, like usually it will find support and resistance at these different levels, um, at least for a certain amount of time, which it did over the last 12 months. Now it has definitely um, gone all the way through it. And looking at the weekly chart, so a longer term signal, it has well and truly gone through it. Now, even though it hasn't closed on its lows, like the Australian market, so the Australian market's still looking a lot weaker than the Dow Jones, um, yeah, we're still looking, it has crossed its uh, longer-term uptrend support, so looking at uh, a bit more downward downward moves as well um, for the Dow Jones 
uh, if you were to believe that this, uh, this trend line does form support and resistance. Next one, what we're doing is looking at the, um, the Hang Seng. And this is the, the last of our, our uh, markets that we're just going to quickly check out. Again, looking at the, um, the uptrend line, the Hang Seng, this is a daily chart. It has um, definitely gone past that longer term uptrend line as well. So it has also got this downtrend line which will cause resistance in the future at about 2000, uh, 22,000 for the Hang Seng. So definitely in a, in a downward move. Again, got our short-term sell signal at 21,000, currently at 20,000, so I've um, dropped at least 5% since then. Um, and yeah, definitely below all of its uptrend lines, as are most of the markets at the moment. So yeah, hope that's helped, guys. Oh, one last thing, just quickly, if we were to look at the ASX Top 200 and the retracement of this last, um, this last uh, bull run for the last 12 months, um, the 50% level is at 4,050, so um, that would be the strongest support level. And currently, it's found support at the 25% level, 4,500. Uh, next one is at 4,265. That's 38.2%. Uh, but the strongest one is at 50%. Um, and yeah, so really, that would be the strongest support level at 4,000 um, or around 4,050. Um, so yeah, if it does continue to drop, that's where I would personally expect it to find support. All right, everyone. Thanks heaps for stopping by. Hey, hopefully, um, you know, well, you know, it's good to see the charts and see where the market is heading. Sometimes it provides a little bit of clarity, which is always nice. Um, and stop by the website. It's asxmarketwatch.com. Um, there's heaps of free tools, and there's uh, also my personal trading diary, which at the moment, um, yeah, as I said, getting mostly stopped out of, uh, of most of my stocks. So um, anyway, stop by that if you want to check out that and a few more tools for trading. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week.